All right, welcome to the Rich Chalenza Show. WTF are you talking about? I'm Rich Chalenza. With Rhea. All right, I have a, a guest here, Rhea Lukes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you ever heard of her. She's been on a couple of my other uh, shows. She sneaks in, and uh, I usually hit her with subjects that she doesn't know that's coming at her, and I have one right now. And it's called um, Don't Think Anger and Hatred um, Can't Make You Successful. So she, I caught her off guard again. Do you understand what I'm saying by this? So here's the thing. We like uh, Jake Ducey, and he sent me another email uh, talking about his new thing where it's the opposite of the law of attraction and how he's working on this thing called the second brain because of the first brain. We were programmed to be, I think, to a certain degree, um, depressed or not think we can accomplish certain things, so you go to your second brain, all right? Mm -hmm. All right, we talked about that earlier. I call Jake Ducey like, what, the Jesus of Law of Attraction? Now he's anti-law attraction? Hmm. Anyways, put that aside. What I want to talk to you about today, Rhea, Mm -hmm. is I think a lot of people don't realize, though, we're always talking about positivity, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, for instance, the Law of Attraction and all those type of things. But I'm going to tell you something. When I had a lot of hatred and anger, Mm -hmm. I got a lot of shit done. And I was probably the most successful I ever was financially. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about that? Are you bringing this up because I've been cranky these last few days and angry and getting lots of stuff done? No, I never thought about that, but thanks for bringing that up. So, yeah, it wasn't that at all. It was actually something I typed in a while ago in my notes that I want to discuss this with you. I realized, too, for instance, you, when you're angry or pissed, Mm -hmm. shit gets done. Right? Because mm-hmm. it's almost like you go on a war path to get it accomplished. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. Anger. Um, Irritability. I, resentment sometimes. Like yeah, resentment. sure. Because like, somebody resents you or somebody challenges you. Sure. Um, anger was a huge thing about... Uh, basically, my mother used to say, always, why are you so angry? Or I never realized you were so angry after she's listening to my podcast, I should say. <laughs> she's like, But you shouldn't hold your anger in, too. That's what Harrison says all the time. Right. We- and I think around my parents, I did hold my anger in. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. But then publicly, I was a tyrant. Uh, maybe my father knew I was crazy. But what do you think as far as, you, you know, you're a successful businesswoman. How do you think a lot of how you became successful was because... For one, you feared your father, which I, I think you mm-hmm. did. And then you also had a lot of anger or a lot of, um, it's it, you know, a lot of drive. But things pissed you off to get shit accomplished is what I'm saying. Do you think that's because I see your personality kind of being like that? Even with work. You want to kick it in the ass. You make women cry. <laughs> <laughs> right? A lot of people fear when you come to see them. Are you doing that intentionally? No. Well, okay. No, I think it's how you carry yourself too. But I do think that um, when I get on these tangents, you know, even, yeah, like at home or at work, shit gets done. Because I think people take you seriously, especially someone like me that's small or petite in stature, you know. Mm -hmm. I think that, what did someone say once? It's like, even though you may be small, you are like, you have a presence about right. you. And I think that, you know, I don't think that there's different types of anger, you know, or, uh, you know, that fire. I don't think I'm, I don't think it has to be the the bad negativity where you're pull, putting people down. Of course not. Right. But I do think it's something where uh, it motivates you because it, it does, it lights a fire under you. Right. So like, for instance, this evening, I didn't have to do all the crap that I had to do tonight, but I just, you know, wanted to just get it done. So at the house, but then even at work, you know, it's like when I am irritated with certain things or certain situations, it seems to push me more. And I think a lot of people are like that, you know? I do too. And instead of looking at it 
where it's a negative, no. I think a lot of people should actually look at that as a positive again. Yeah, I would. I would agree. I don't like. I said, you know, that kind of drive or, you know, doesn't need to be uh, negative because the negativity actually brings you down. Where this kind of lights a fire, I think it's it's different. It is different. Yeah. It's, um, well, even if we're going to the gym, and I know sometimes you're not in the mood to go to the gym. Like today, I was not in the mood. Right, and you're pissy. But you almost go on a war path when you get there. You're like, you don't play the role. I was discussing this with you earlier. You don't. You never play the sympathy role. What was the other thing I was and saying the about victim. you? The excuse. Oh yeah, the excuse. Or the victim role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, you won't yeah. be like, oh, I can't work out today because right, right, right. this happened at work, or because I don't feel like it, or now I got another headache, or because I ate pizza last night. Whatever the case may I be. I did have a headache today, and we went. Right. I think. From the first time I met you, you kind of, when I first met you, you addressed me almost like a man. The way you shook my hand, remember back when I, you, I see when you walk up to men, you, you kind of shake their hand, you're staring at them down, you want to, you know what I mean? You want to show a form of power. Yeah. Right? Sure. Isn't that what you want to do? Well, right. I'm not saying you want to intimidate them, but no. you want to be somebody that is known for being, not forceful, but somebody who's not to be reckoned with, Correct. Correct. You got that from where your father. Yeah, my dad. Well, and, my mom too. She's she's really the scarier one, if I want to say that. Your mom and dad are kind of like tyrants. Yeah. We're right. Yeah, they're like they're they are like typical. In a good way. Yeah, but they're In typical. An way. I would say they are um, stereotype Asian mom and dad. Right. right, the biggest givers you've ever. Oh met, yeah, absolutely. With the biggest expectors of certain things. Oh yeah. Like expecting I'm, my to be... feet are sweating just thinking about it right now. <laughs> well, her father's a ex-military. Or yeah, a, a officer. Military, yeah, career years. military. Thirty. And your mother was uh, in the medical field. Worked the graveyard the... shift. I mean, yeah. From the Philippines, as you yep. know, came here and it was hard on a lot of yeah, Asians. Yeah, immigrants, or, right? Yeah, yeah sure. immigrants slash Asians. Yeah. Um, so they don't have any sympathy for us, which I like. But even if I notice with your dad or with my, you know, my my father. He constantly talks about himself offending people. It's almost like his identity to a certain degree. He he says, I'm always coming off offensive. He even acknowledged it, you know, acknowledges mm-hmm. that about himself. But I'll tell you one thing, especially when he was younger and throughout the years, he was brutal on himself. I'm not saying he wasn't angry. He was actually a funner type person, more nightclub, mm-hmm. that type of stuff. But he did, he would not, he would never fall short of what he wanted to accomplish, Mm -hmm. if that kind of makes sense. But when it came to me, a lot, I don't know if it's from my immigrant grandparents or being, you know, Italian or whatever it is, I had hatred and anger that I didn't have certain things that I wanted and I would almost attack to go after those things. Mm -hmm. And I would use these certain things even when I lifted weights or when I was smaller. Like I'm lifting weights to go beat somebody up hypothetically or I would get in fights when I was younger and say I lost mm-hmm. I'd lift weights to get bigger and stronger to go find that person again to give them a beating mm-hmm. or <laughs> same with sports or even in wrestling mm-hmm. I wrestled for many years or anything in sports if, if someone ever beat me in anything I it would charge me that that loss would almost make me crazy and that's why I kind of started my whole thing with Sore Losers Productions and everything but anyways, that's what I wanted to talk about on this is I think a lot of people, when they get caught up in certain things, they're just saying, hey, you're being negative or hey, you're, you know, you always come across this way. But I think a lot of that is good. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think a lot of people's first impressions of me too are like, um, gosh, she's kind of a bitch or, you know, not very, uh, you know, I don't know if it's kind's the right word, but I, I don't I don't think that that's intentional by any means. But then I think once people get to know me or, you know, even you, you you look really mean all the time and angry. So and I'm not and it's, you're not. It's my face. It is your face, but you do look scary. But um, I, I think that it's the way that we carry ourselves and it. I, you know, you, it drives us, but yeah, you're right. I don't think anger necessarily has to be negative. I think there are two different things. Um, and whatever motivates you, you know, um, like at work, for instance, you know, being, 
you know, this last year at the bottom has really motivated me to, you know, it makes me angry. It makes me mad because that, you know, I'm a winner and, you know, winners are, you know, don't, are not at the bottom, but then I, I don't see myself as a loser. Right. right. So it's just kind of, um, we do it's have ups me. and downs like everybody sure, else sure, in business. Absolutely. But I no think, one's always up. I don't no, care. No, no, no. Well, no. And I think it makes people stronger too. You know, people who are always at the top and don't know um, failure uh, are are not do not um, tend to be successful in the long term. And I think if you look at a lot of uh, not just celebrities, but people who are very successful now have really had really tough times at one point in their either career or their life. So I think it makes us stronger. So uh, you could you can take that as you know ne- you can turn it to a negative where it brings you down and you're not motivated, or you can take it as a lesson learned that pushes you farther. Yeah, and I think like there's a fine line too between anger and say confidence too. Sure. Right. Because right. a lot yeah, of people, are, right? A lot of people you'll meet will be like, "Wow, you're." If you come off overly confident, um, then and you're, you're a ex- douchebag, right? Or you, <laughs> exactly, or you ex- you have certain expectations of people around you. You wanting, you want them to succeed, and if you kind of harp on them or get angry at them because maybe they're not, you know, not a basically not doing what they're supposed to be doing and it's not me telling them what they but sure, you just sure. have certain expectations it would of be our course. our kids you me you know right. you have a lot of you know my mother and father i'm sure if i you know we make our parents angry our kids make us angry oh, let's yeah. call it for what yeah, it is yeah, yeah. anybody who sits around and i have a lot of family members hundreds and a lot of them pretend like their kids are great or they live all these certain lifestyles. And then I have other ones that all they do is complain about their kids mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and their spouses and all that shit too. When we're talking about anger, we're not talking about that you hate your spouse or hatred regarding right, that. Right, right. I'm talking about having anger where you kind of funnel into being more driven. Right, absolutely. Right? That's kind of what I'm talking about. And I think a lot of people, when they get angry, they get scared. They're like, right. I don't want people to see me like this. Right. Um, or you get angry and you may offend somebody at a dinner table or anywhere and that person is like I can't believe you know they believe this it could be political religious or whatever but again that's not anger directed towards that person right, right? you right. can just be angry about something that's happening well, I don't think it's not in always, the country but I don't even necessarily think it's always anger I think that some people are again back to what we've talked about before also I think that people are just too sensitive nowadays right so they misconstrue your passion for something to be anger where it's not necessarily that so anyway um yeah yeah but I think a lot of people their drive sometimes and I can say it about me when I kind of soften up Mm mm-hmm if I don't have that edge where I start getting angry that I didn't finish this or I'm mm-hmm. not accomplishing what I wanted mm-hmm. to accomplish or what I'm setting out to do, I, I've got to gravitate, I think, towards that. Because if I'm like, you know what, it's okay, it's cool, Rich, you know what I mean? You'll get to it when you get to it or we'll do that another time or whatever the case may be, then, then it's like, what, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Then I'm kind of fluffing it off. But mm-hmm. And when I say anger, too, I mean towards myself, I mm-hmm. think, more than anything. And sometimes I would hate myself because certain things did not work out the way I thought they were going to work out. And that would sometimes either drive me to go harder or it would actually kind of depress me. Yeah. Right. right. Well, <clears throat> to keep it positive, it should motivate you because... Um... It shouldn't drive you to shut down or become depressed because then that's a whole different thing. I think that, you know, like you've been trying to talk about is, you know, how to, I keep on saying it as a fire lit of passion versus, you know, something that's going to be, drive you to be depressed or down. Because number one, um, you know, if you're angry at yourself, you should still, number one, love yourself. And, you know, is that, that's the more, more most important thing. Because if you love yourself, you know that you're better than what's going on in your life. And, and maybe that's what's motivating you because it's like you're, you're disappointing yourself or, you know, and that's what's making you angry because you're not living to your full potential. Yeah, and I used to think sometimes like, Anger or certain things, since we're on that, it, it's like a, uh, like I used to say, it's like a match or like an inferno. Like it starts with just a match, right? That's what I keep saying. It yeah, lights a fire. Yeah, and yeah. then before you know it, you have an inferno. Right, like right, right, right. Internally. Sure. Of anger. 
it could be regarding anything. And that's why I think a lot of people obviously flip out or they go crazy. And back to seeing other people, which we're all surrounded by people that are angry. I think it just takes a lot of patience to understand we're all going to be angry at times. Right. But a lot of times I've seen my friends, family members angry regarding a lot of things. Mm -hmm. It could be work, especially. Mm -hmm. And then I see how (laughs) after being so angry and what's the word Um, inspired or not inspired, so passionate about something Mm -hmm. that it ends up succeeding. Like it's something, it ends up something huge Mm. or I didn't even see that. Mm. I'm like, what are you getting pissed off about? Why are you angry about this stupid Mm. little thing Mm. or what's that? And then you look down the road, you're like, wow, I really blew that because that was a huge deal or that ended up being huge. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, so anyways, that was what I want to talk to you about on this one. Anything else you want to add to this one? I'm done. Nice. All right. Thanks for listening to the, uh, Rich Chalunza show. WTF are you talking about with Rhea? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I post these different ones with Rhea off and on. If Mm -hmm. you want to uh, know anything more about me, you could just go to my richchalenza.com website. Uh, I have a Mastering Self-Confidence program. You could see that on masteringselfconfidence.com. I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Rhea, where are you? You're on Instagram? Oh, yeah, I'm always on Instagram, Facebook. Um, (laughs) I am on LinkedIn, uh, I don't, I, I I have a Twitter. I don't understand Twitter, so I don't tweet. It, it's just, I mean, it confuses me. So, um. Reason a lot of my posts, um, as far as me visiting gyms all over North America, she goes yep. to all the, all to the, uh, a bunch of LA fitnesses. So if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see her there. And I've been harping on her forever because she should get a, I should get angry at her right now and kick her in the ass. She went to school for journalism. Right. And she was the one who was supposed to do her own YouTube channel, her own podcast, right? Right. Are you trying to make me angry? That's what I'm saying. This is a perfect example. I'm going to get angry a little bit, and Mm -hmm. then I'm going to get her pissed off. Mm -hmm. What's funny is she's still not going to do anything about it. She's just going to... Who knows? You're going to ride my skirt tails. Sure, right. You're riding it right now with this podcast. Right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, where's your podcast? You know what? Rhea was the first one to go live on Facebook, not ever, or whatever, that out of a lot of people I knew, we had hurricanes in Florida, and she was going out into the fields with the hurricanes, remember? Oh, yeah, 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 that's good. She, she was in the middle of the storms. How many, what are you, were going to, thousands of people? What is it? Was like, I can't remember. Well, that she was, was fun. She was doing her own videos facebook live and she was in the middle of the hurricane running outside of our place (laughs) in the storms people from canada all over the country were like sharing it and they were like ria you should do this how many years did you take journalism oh i went to u of o and took journalism i went to the j school for a little bit yeah you wanted to be uh what's her name connie chong oh my you missed your calling I know. Rhea loves talking. She'd be great at videos. She would, <laughs> And her new thing was her and her three girlfriends were going to do a podcast. This two was, of us. The three of us. Two of us. I said, okay, that'll happen in the next decade. I know. I got to call them. Maybe I'll make them angry. So anyway. Yeah, make everybody angry. Anyway. Start whatever. your own podcast. Funny. All right. All right. That's it. We're going to wrap it up there. Take care. And uh, if you're traveling, safe travels. Bye.